Hey everyone, before I get into my intro, this is my intro for my intro. Just wanted to say that there's going to be some information at the end of the video that you might want to watch. There's going to be some information about some upcoming content and also a little bit of information of why each survivor placed where they did. Anyway, enjoy the video. Hello everyone, today I'm going to be giving you a Risk of Rain 2 Survivor tier list. Before I get into the list though, I just want to say that not only are tier lists somewhat subjective, but the arbitrary rating I put on your favorite survivor means very little. What I'm trying to convey in this tier list is the consistency and overall power that every survivor in Risk of Rain 2 has based on my personal experience. If your favorite character ranks lower than others, there's probably a good reason, but I am not infallible, so feel free to discuss in the comments, but please do keep it civil. And of course, regardless of what people think, even me, play the character you have fun with. Alright, with that out of the way, let's get into this list. And so I don't keep you guys waiting, here's the tier list from worst to best. I'll throw it up on the screen too. Rex, Commando, Mercenary, Artificer, Loader, Huntress, Multi, and Engineer. In that order. I will be explaining every single one of these choices in detail, and this will include why I feel they should rank where they do. I'll try to timestamp the link so you can get right to the section you want and start hating slash loving me as quickly as possible. Okay, first up is the lovable plant robot Rex. Rex is actually super good. I'm certain you didn't expect me to say that. I mean, he is number 8 for crying out loud, but in reality, Mr. Last Place here is without a doubt the best DPS survivor when no items are involved. That said, you are probably wondering, why is he dead last then? Well, it's because he's downright difficult to play and there's so many ways to mess up when playing Rex. He just isn't an easy survivor to play and therein lies the problem. He isn't a consistent nor reliable character to use in most runs. But why is he complicated? Why is he not reliable? To answer that, let me take you through his rotation. For Rex to do damage, he has to use his primary, which weakens enemies and reduces their armor, and then use his secondary, which does 450% damage but also costs 15% of Rex's total health. To counteract the damage he does to himself, Rex's first ability heals for 30% of its damage, while his special heals for every target that he hits. What this usually looks like is Rex using his weakens to make sure that the enemy takes more damage, then using his secondary ability which will do the massive amount of damage that he outputs, but costing him 15% of its health, so he wants this to hit. Because of this, usually a Rex will use his special to group up enemies and decreasing the chance he will miss his secondary attack. Remember, if you are Rex and you miss your secondary attack, the only thing you are doing is hurting yourself. So you can see why he is so complicated now. Rex constantly has to balance his damage with his health pool, and that's something that no other survivor has to worry about. But this weakness is technically also Rex's main strength as well. In exchange for his health, he does some pretty good DPS in the early game, and the weakens, which reduces the enemy's armor, is super strong. And being so strong in the early game is pretty important, considering that the early game determines what happens during the rest of the run. Also, the fact that Rex can actually gain back his health is pretty strong as well. No one else can gain back their health without items. The closest thing to this is the loader's passive, which gives her a temporary barrier when she hits things, but Rex can actually directly gain back his HP. This gives him far more control over his overall survivability. Which of course is yet another reason why he is so strong in the early game. But what happens later in the game? What happens when everyone has the items they need to do DPS and most of their bases are covered? Does Rex do well here at all? Sadly, the answer is no. The things that make him strong early don't lend themselves well to being good late. Sure, getting health is nice, but by minute 20, most survivors have a decent item or two that will keep them above half HP. And his damage? Pathetic. Most other survivors all have abilities that far surpass what Rex's can do, and what's attack speed is factored in? Rex's pathetic M1 just isn't going to get it done. Basically, the later it goes, the weaker Rex gets compared to every other survivor in the game. Pair this with the fact that Rex is one of the hardest characters to play in Risk of Rain 2, and you've got a last place contender. Sorry little guy, but that's why you take the bottom spot. Coming in at number 7, The Commando. I'm not going to lie to any of you out there right now, I hate The Commando. I hate him, I hate him, I hate him. I have recently been going through most of the survivors in an effort to get the mastery skins, which require you to obliterate yourself at the Celestial Portal, and oh my god, does the commando suck at everything. Wanna do AoE? Oh, don't pick commando. 
Want to do single target? Please don't pick Commando. Want to have fun playing the game? Please don't pick Commando. This isn't even an overreaction. Unless you have tape to hold your M1 down while you go do something else, there really isn't much to the Commando himself. It took me 20 minutes to kill a boss as the Commando on Monsoon difficulty. Granted, I was a little bit behind, but that's what the Commando does. He gets behind. And when you are on a lackluster vanilla character with a bad start, you're never going to catch up. But I understand why the Commando is the way he is. Being the first survivor that everyone has unlocked requires him to be easy to play. Sadly, this also translates into him being not only just boring, but bad. If I had to say what the strength of Commando is, and this is a big if, I had a gun to my head, because I certainly don't think he has a strength, I would say it is his simplicity. Point at the enemy and shoot them. Roll away when enemy attacks you. That's it. But his weakness, and his main one anyway, is that he needs several items to do decent damage while at the same time being one of the worst early game survivors in the game. Which is funny, because there are several other better characters that need the exact same thing. For example, I would say that the Huntress has a bad early game similar to the Commando, but she has a higher DPS potential, and therefore she is going to be better than the Commando in every way. Her dash is better, her primary is better, her ult is better, everything about her is just better than the Commando. Roll this all into someone who is a boring, bland, vanilla character. I've got you in my sights. And you've got someone that takes the seventh spot. I dare say that the commando is worse than Rex, but the commando is far easier to play, and I think that he is a little bit more reliable, so he takes the seventh spot. For number six, we have Mercenary. If this was a most fun survivor in Risk of Rain 2 tier list, then the Mercenary would be right at the top. Regrettably, it isn't, so here he is towards the bottom, in company such as the Commando. This is where I think the list gets better, though. From this survivor forward, I'm pretty comfortable in saying that they are all good, or in other words, can perform consistently and optimally in a monsoon run. Anyway, the Mercenary. This is one of the two and a half melee survivors in Risk of Rain 2. Similarly to Rex, the Mercenary does take a bit of skill to use, but he isn't nearly as punishing. Something of note is that the Mercenary has 20 base armor. This translates roughly into a 16% damage reduction, meaning that when you get into melee range, you're going to take a little bit less damage than you would if you were a ranged character. Besides that, the Mercenary is the second most mobile survivor in Risk of Rain, losing out only to the absolute unit that is Loader. Because all of his abilities give him some form of forward momentum and he has a double jump, the Mercenary can reach places no other survivor can. On top of that, the Mercenary skills also do some pretty decent damage, with his special giving him an iframe aka invincibility for a few seconds. Well, technically I don't think this is a invincibility frame, because if you have a dot on you it will still do some damage, so ethereal ability? I don't know, but seriously dots wreck the Mercenary. Which leads me to the point that I'm about to make, Certain enemies that do DOTs are deadly to the mercenary. Blazing elites are the one thing that a mercenary prays to never see and don't even get me started on the Lemurians. A pack of these babies are going to shred a mercenary into non-existence. Yeah, true respite. Essentially, because the mercenary struggles against extremely common enemy types and has to be in melee range to do all of his damage, he is ranking number 6. Alright, number 5 is the Artificer. Personally, the Artificer is one of my favorites, so it hurts me to put her so far up on the list, but alas, tis where she belongs. She relies pretty heavily on her cooldowns to do damage and doesn't benefit tremendously from things like attack speed or lifesteal. This is because her main ability has 4 charges, but a couple second cooldown, meaning regardless of her attack speed, there's a finite amount of time she can attack. Of course, the Artificer doesn't really need attack speed, as most of her abilities do an insane amount of damage. Take her Flamethrower, for example, which does 17,000% damage or 1700, sorry, but according to the wiki, it will do a 4400% damage to enemies standing in front of the attack. Also, the Artificer has the ability to freeze enemies with certain attacks, like her Snap Freeze, which causes them to instantly die if they get below 30% health. For reference, that is the equivalent of 3 guillotines, and sadly, it doesn't work on bosses. Tragically, the Artificer doesn't have a mobility ability, which directly impacts her survivability in the long run. High DPS is nice, but not being able to escape a straight titan beam or a group of wisps makes her that much more vulnerable and that much more likely to die. To really boil it down here, the Artificer is a strong survivor with awesome abilities, but she lacks mobility and can't scale with attack speed or life speed, at least not as well as the others on the list. Because of these weaknesses, and yes, a couple of things more that I should have discussed, 
She is number five. Moving on to number four, we have the loader. At this point in the list, all of these survivors are super strong. I can't believe that the loader is number four on this list because of how good she is, but realistically, someone has to take fourth place, so here you are. Loader is the one punch woman of Risk of Rain 2. Ironically, the loader is like the second tankiest survivor as well, and maybe even the first if you count the effective HP she gets from her passive, which gives her barrier for doing damage with her fists. And it wouldn't be too much if I told you she is also the most mobile survivor in Risk of Rain 2? I mean, seriously, the loader does just about everything really well. Although not technically a burst class because she can punch others while her abilities are on cooldown, the loader is strongest when played like this. Her charge gauntlet allows her to do a tremendous amount of damage and is increased the faster she moves. Swinging around the environment like a human tire swing while charging her gauntlet will make the attack do a third of a boss's health. In cases where the loader is pressured or low on health, she can do one of two things, punch something for barrier or zip away on her grappling hook, making it hard for her to die in most scenarios. Plus, because she is melee, she gets 20 armor, and just like the mercenary, she gets a 16% damage reduction. Although, the loader does have some weaknesses. Being melee, she struggles dealing with flying enemies like Wiss or Vagrants, and the only reliable way for her to deal with this is her special, which does some AoE but lacks meaningful damage. All in all, the loader is a good class that is incredibly easy and fun to play, but just isn't as good as the rest of the survivors on the list, so it's number 4 for her. We are now at number 3, the Huntress. The Huntress has, at least in my opinion, the second highest DPS potential in Risk of Rain 2. She has AoE, she has single target, she has an iframe, she can sprint while attacking, and the list goes on. And all of these things make it so she can continually pump out massive amounts of damage with little downtime. Even while moving about the map, she can be killing things, which allows her to be far more efficient with her time while preventing a buildup of enemies. With the addition of her new loadout, the Ballista, she can do far more single target damage than she has ever been able to do. Previously she had arrow rain, but that was mainly an AoE ability, and because she has the glaive, it was kind of overkill. The ballista just complements her playstyle in a really good way. In terms of weaknesses though, she has a pretty bad early game, and she has the lowest HP in the game. This can make scaling the huntress pretty hard, considering that anything can basically kill her. But again, because of her iframe and the massive amount of damage she does, she will be able to handle most of these early game enemies pretty well. Just play a little bit smarter and don't be Pepega Brain. To wrap this up, because the Huntress has the second highest DPS potential in the game and has an iframe dash which allows her to negate one of her weaknesses, aka her being a glass cannon, she is number 3. And now we are on number 2, Multi. Out of all the survivors, Multi is the one with the highest damage potential and the highest amount of health. I don't know why, but the developers must love this guy. The reason he has the highest damage potential is due in large part to his incredible first ability which has the fastest attack rate in the whole game. And because all attack speed items boost attack speed percentage wise, Multi ends up attacking at ridiculous speeds once he gets enough syringes. The developers recognize this and decrease his proc coefficient which means he'll proc items less. Now this doesn't end up with him proccing way less than every other character because he has a fast attack rate. This is just to balance him so he doesn't end up proccing ukuleles every two seconds. Also, for some reason, this character who has the highest DPS potential in the game also starts out with like 12 armor, I believe. Don't ask me why he has 12 armor, I mean he's a ranged character and he's the only other character other than the melee characters that have armor. And speaking of Multi's armor, if he uses his shift, which is transport mode, he gets 200 armor. You want to know how much damage reduction 200 armor is? I'll tell you, it's 66%. So this character that I just got done telling you has the highest DPS potential in the game, has the fastest attack rate in the game, also gets 66% damage reduction when he uses his utility skill. That is insane. Plus, his utility skill actually allows him to move quicker. It's no iframe or anything, but 66% damage reduction and moving at a fast pace is extremely powerful. Not only that, but Multi can actually hold two equipment slots and can equip two different weapons. Having two equipment slots doubles the efficiency of a fuel cell and negates the only negative effect of Gesture of the Drown, which is automatically using the equipment whenever it's off cooldown. So Multi, who has the highest DPS potential in the game, has 12 starting armor, can get 200 more armor, and can hold 2 equipment slots, is number 2 on the list. But what manner of beast can possibly beat out Multi? 
Well, at the top slot, we have the engineer. The engineer, which in French means survivor I play because I have no friends, is number uno. I consider the engineer to be the best solo survivor and the most consistent survivor as well. Nobody can match him when it comes to efficiency. Both of his turrets copy all of his items, meaning he gets triple the effect of every item, and they can do all the work while the engineer just runs around opening chests. Plus, the engineer has some damage of his own. His primary ability shoots multiple grenades at once, which allow him to do massive amounts of damage to large enemies that are hard to miss, aka bosses, and his mines allow him to take care of large groups of enemies that his primary attack might miss. And just like Huntress, the engineer can sprint while attacking. Even in the worst case scenarios where the engineer finds himself surrounded or in need of cover, he can create it with his bubble shield, applying a big fat band-aid on newer players who don't understand the concept of not standing in the open. But I don't mean to say he is without weakness. He lacks mobility and can't operate well once his turrets are destroyed. Being behind on the engineer is terrible. Not only do your turrets die instantly, but you also don't do very much damage either. The problem with that statement is, you should never be behind on the engineer. And that's how the engineer beats Multi. He is the most consistent survivor out of all survivors. All you have to do is be aware of the engineer's weaknesses, which you can check out in my engineer video, link up in the top. And you should always make it to at least stage 4 on the engineer even if you have the worst RNG in the game. Plus, the Engineer has a busted combo with Bustling Fungus and Nehukanas, which allows him to do insane amounts of damage and literally just stand still in AFK while his turrets do all of the damage. I hope you don't think I'm joking either. I've literally went AFK when playing the Engineer. All you have to do is sit in the middle of your turrets while they have Bustling Fungus active. And if you're wondering why he is so far up on the list, well, that's the reason. You try to go AFK on any other character. Let's see how that works out, huh? But in all seriousness, to summarize the engineer, his turrets copy his items, he can sprint and attack, but he is largely immobile and can suffer from getting behind. And that's it. That's my character tier list for Risk of Rain 2. I'm sure a lot of you are frustrated right now, seeing as how the engineer is at the top and your favorite character is probably at the bottom, but it's alright, we can have a calm discussion in the comments if you would like. I love to discuss even more of the facets of every single survivor in this game. It's a lot of fun. But, it's already a 17 minute video and I don't want to make it any longer. So please, please, please do leave a comment below. I'd love to discuss with you why you think a survivor should rank somewhere else. But anyway, that's the end of the video. Thanks for watching. Like if you like it. Subscribe if you want more like this. Yada, yada, yada. You know the deal. Bye! Boop. So you thought the video was done, huh? Well, not quite yet because I have an announcement to make. I'm going to be coming out with some new videos for Risk of Rain 2 that are going to cover me doing several different challenges. These are going to range from anything to mastery challenges to doing the long road on every character. Starting out, it's just going to be doing all the mastery challenges for everyone and currently I have done a bunch however the recording did not go off so instead of being able to release a video today i'm gonna have to wait a little bit longer to get more recordings out because i have to redo the challenges anyways just thought i'd give you an update on what's gonna be happening here in the near future but that's it bye